the Senior Midwest Organizer for Food and Water Watch. This is my beautiful assistant, Eileen. <laughs> and we wanted to tell you a little bit about the campaign to label GMOs thus far and talk about uh, the strategy we've had up to now and the strategy moving forward. Um, because it's not just one march that happens one day every year. The, the, I guess, campaign to label GMOs in Illinois and across the country has been strong for a long time and is one that is not going away. So we see labels on genetically engineered food as an uh, eventuality and inevitability. I think we'll look back on this time and wonder why it took us so long uh, to wake up. So you won't all be able to see this, but I wanted to give you an idea. Um, food and Water Watch started working with Senator Dave Kaler way back in September of 2012. At that time, he did not want to be our champion. As you may know, GMOs and the companies that promote them are extremely powerful forces in all levels of government. It took hundreds of phone calls and letters and activities just like this one to convince our champion, who has now stood with us for years, to take the lead. Um, it is not a popular position in the Illinois legislature, and we're lucky to have someone like him on our side. Um, it's taken us, the, I guess, the years since then to promote, I guess, education, understanding, and a counter-argument to the things that our legislators are hearing from the biotech industry. But it's not enough to get people educated. Our legislators are not voting against us because they don't understand. They're voting against us because they are heavily influenced by corporate dollars and because they do not hear enough from their constituents. I want to repeat that they do not hear enough from their constituents. They think that they can vote against us and our rights and our interests and no one will notice. And unfortunately for the last few years, we've proven them right. We've proven them right. So, uh, in the year 2015, we've been the most successful we've ever been. We have changed positions for people who said they would never stand with us. And the way we've been able to do that is by organizing strategically in specific regions and choosing targets. Um, targets are people who can give us what we want. Uh, choosing them based on the allies we have, the power we have, and the positions that we know they are in. So nothing that has happened in any of the campaigns to label GMOs is an accident. None of it happened um, by way of, of fancy or caprice or imagination. It was all very strategic. So we're really excited that in the last few years, our friends in uh, Vermont, in Maine, and in Connecticut have been able to pass GMO labeling bills. Vermont even won a legislative battle, I'm sorry, a legal battle in the recent past, and they predict that they will start labeling GMOs in Vermont in 2016. This is absolutely huge. This is absolutely huge. So many states have said, if we can do it in Illinois, why haven't other states done it? And now we can say they have and they are. So we see that the future of this campaign in Illinois is more robust than it's ever been and will be very strong. However, there are some people who still stand between us and what we need. These are the names of people who stand with us now. At the end of this training, if you would like to find out if your legislator is on this list, I can teach you how to do that really quickly and really easily. It does require smartphone technology, which I understand not everyone has. Um, but we also have at Food and Water Watch a training about how to identify your lawmakers and uh, how to contact them the most efficiently. So. so, when we are looking into uh, who we want to work with, who are we going to ask um, questions of, who do we want on our side, we can't just choose uh, randomly. We can't pick a name out of the air or say, I live in Carbondale, Illinois. I'll, I'll talk only to my legislator. Why is that? Some legislators um, are actually GMO farmers. Some of the lawmakers in Illinois grow GMOs, have worked for biotech companies or for the Farm Bureau, and have very close ties, very close ties with our direct opponents. Uh, those, those opponents include uh, the Illinois Retail Manufacturers Association, the Farm Bureau, and unfortunately the Illinois Chamber of Commerce. So you can imagine what kind of influence these groups have. <laughs> when we are choosing people, we have to say, who is with us? Does anybody here know, besides the people who are standing on this plaza, who are the groups, organizations, or other bodies that are with us? Natural Resource Defense Council. Who else? Sierra Club. 
My cats. <laughs> Organic Consumers Association, your kids? My cats. My cats. My cats. Kelly, my kids, you stop moving backwards. So we've got a lot of people who are on our team and what we what we like to do is make a list of who is with us and then make a map of where those people have power, where do they have influence, where are they connected with our lawmakers and how can we move that conversation forward. Then we have to say who is against us. We were just talking about who is against us. If we don't have the power to combat those interests, if we don't have the people power to silence them with our cries, if we don't have the organizational power to prove that we are on the right side, we cannot change the minds of some lawmakers. So for instance, Linda Holmes is a Democrat in Aurora, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago that is extremely aware of the GMO battle. People take it very seriously, it's near and dear to their hearts, and she is not voting with her constituents. I've heard a lot of fun rumors about Linda Holmes, but the one that is the most clear after all of this battling is that she will do anything for money anything for money. So at the end of the day, we're not going to give her our money. We're not going to give her our money. We're going to pack up our bags and walk off and, and talk to the people who we can influence. So who do we need to get with us now? So we haven't won yet, right? What do we need to do? Who do we need to have on our team so that we will win? Unfortunately, all of us here, I am preaching to the choir. Nobody here, nobody here is, I guess, out of the loop. Or, or falling behind, we need to educate people who do not know what a GMO is. There are, I mean, most of the people who are walking by likely don't know what a GMO is. Those of them who do don't know why it's a problem or don't know why they should be upset. I mean, beyond the environmental and even the human health impacts of GMOs, this is the commodification of life and nature. These are patents on things that are alive, that float on the breeze, that reproduce on their own volition. This is a very serious situation for our food, for our food system, and for the uh, future of a lot of natural products. So what will it take, what will it take to get the people who don't know us now, who don't stand with us, who are not interested or making this battle a priority, what will it take? It'll take a lot of education and outreach on the part of the people who are here, but it will also take important leadership within our legislature. So when I talk about passing uh, Senate Bill 734, I know that there are a ton of people against us. You saw that list. We have more co-sponsors on our bill to label GMOs in the Senate than a wide range of very popular, very obvious bills. There is a tremendous amount of support, an exceptional amount of support for our right to know in the Senate, why doesn't this bill get passed? Why hasn't it come up? I can tell you right now that there is leadership. The President of the Senate, the Speaker of the House, they feel that they are vulnerable. They are vulnerable to the biotech company and they would rather hide under a rock and ignore this problem, assuming that we will all go away, than address the issue and take the risk to give us the right to know. They are saying that these companies are more powerful and more influential than we are and that has got to stop. That has got to stop. So today, we want to be sure that the people who are keeping us from what we deserve and what is our right know that we are watching them, we know what they've done and what they haven't done, and we are very, very, very upset. So how do we do this? Um, we do it in a number of ways. We ask you to sign petitions all the time. Unfortunately, a petition signature is not that impactful. When we get thousands upon thousands, it can work, and it has worked, and we have given tens of thousands of petition signatures to the Senate President and especially the Governor at this point. But we need your help. We need your help today. We need your help right now. And so what I would like us to do, I would like everyone here, everyone here, including all these people who aren't really, you know, they're not quite with us, I would like us to write a letter to the Senate President right now, letting him know that we have watched this bill soar in popularity. The people of Illinois are becoming more informed than they've ever been about the prevalence of GMOs in our food, and he cannot ignore us any longer. So we're going to write him a letter. We have an introduction, and I have a packet of information. So maybe you're a little bit nervous. Maybe you've never written to the Senate president before. Maybe you've never written to anyone in the legislature. That's okay. These are just regular people who are not very educated on a number of issues that you are very educated about. <laughs> and they need your wisdom. If you don't give them your wisdom, how will they vote correctly? So we have an introduction. I have a ton of paper and we have 
a lot of suggested one-liners um, along with some hot tips. Hot tips about writing to legislators. Don't put too many facts in there, they'll just forget them. Their brains are limited, their time is also limited. Give them two or maybe three facts that are important to you. Another hot tip, sign with your name, your full name, and your address. It is possible that this person will want to contact you and ask you to unlock your trove of information um, about the issue or about your stance. So I'm gonna hand these things out right now and I will take questions, but I fully, I fully expect that everyone here will write a letter and help us deliver it, if you are available, next week to his office. So, um, without further ado, I'm gonna pass out some uh, materials for us to do that, and then I would love to take questions. We're gonna get started. My name is Mike Dershmid. I'm with the March Against Monsanto, Chicago. I also represent the Organic Consumer Association and Illinois Right to Know, GMO. And we have a lot of allies. For instance, Food and Water Watch, Jessica Fudian. She will be our first speaker, and here she is. Hey guys, I'm Jessica Fudian. I'm the Midwest organizer for Food and Water Watch. It is wonderful to see you all. You look beautiful, and there are so many of us and actually so few opponents today. So give yourselves a hand for making it out, for looking big and looking strong. So this is not the first time I've seen many of you. We have gathered on a number of occasions over the last three years to make GMO labeling the law in Illinois. It has been through your hard work, your raised voices, and so much of the energy that you put into educating your friends that we have gotten to the point where we are. I want to thank you again for coming out today in this beautiful weather. Monsanto and many of the biotech industries that are trying to sell us their seeds have corporatized and in many cases privatized ownership of what is biological, something that belongs to nature, something that no man can possess. And we're here to take back our food system to say we will not stand for the commodification of the things that are the most important to us. The food that we eat. And the water that we drink, water that we do not want to drink polluted with pesticides and agrochemicals. So we've worked hard to promote SB 734, the Genetically Engineered Food Labeling Act here in our, Act here in our Senate. We have gotten many, many letters written by people that are here right now that we will deliver to the Senate President uh, John Cullerton next Friday. Um, uh, let's hear it for John Cullerton, the man who is preventing us from seeing food labels. We give him a boo! John Cullerton, you sneaky scoundrel. So I want to give everyone one more opportunity. So just because you've come to March does not necessarily mean the people that need to hear us will, right? We don't see a lot of lawmakers here with us today. We definitely don't see any members of Congress. So what can we do to reach them? I've got an idea. I just so happen to have a toll-free phone number that can connect us to the Senate President's office, John Cullerton. If he's going to stand between us and our right to know, I think it's time we give him a call and let him know how that makes us feel. So, I need you to take out your phones. I'm not even kidding. Get your phone out right now. I saw you take a picture. I know you've got it with you. So you're gonna call this number. You'll hear a recording of my beautiful voice and you'll be connected to his office, and you just need to let the Senate President know that it is our right to know what we are eating, what we are feeding our children, and we will not tolerate his, his delays and the blockage of our right to know in Illinois. So the phone number is 888-498-2945. Again, 888-498-2945. Four, five. And I want to hear all kinds of things. I want to hear what you've got to say to the Senate President. Let him know how you feel. Do it now? Yes, do it right now. Hit send. We can all hit send at the exact same time. You calling? Yeah. I can hear you. I, I can hear I can hear it too. Feel free to set your phone to, your phone to speaker if you're so inclined. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of smiles and nods. 
Let's see if we can fill his voicemail box right now. Seven three four in favor of labeling GMOs in Illinois. Please stop blocking my right to know what I'm eating. Thank you. Looking good, guys. I see many of you are still leaving voicemails. This is good. Once, you, once you've left your message, let me see your sign up in the air. Maybe we can tweet them some photos. There you go. You guys look beautiful. Thank you guys again so much for taking action, not just coming out today to march for the public, but for telling our elected officials what it is we want and why we deserve it. They work for us, we pay their salaries, we vote for them in elections, and we will not have to vote for them in the future if they are not representing our interests. So stay strong, stay united, stay informed about where we are in our battle, and I'll look forward to seeing you when we win. Hi, um, Commissioner Frank Evelyn. Where's the there's the commissioner right here? We have elected fish officials. Thank you, Mike. Uh, my name is Commissioner Frank Avila. I'm the commissioner at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And what we do there, is, and we do it at the back end. What we do is that we treat the two peas in the pot. What are the two peas in the pot? We treat poop and pee, but we don't treat the third pea. The third P is profit. That's what we don't do. We don't treat the, the profit. And, and the problem that we have is that they want us to treat everything at the back end when we should do it at the front end. Prevention. We should have prevention because once it comes to us, it's already out there. Our kids have it. Our, our, uh, the human beings have it. it. It's out there already. And that's why our kids are being born today with adult diseases. They're being born today with adult diseases because all the pesticides and herbicides that, are, that has been approved by the US EPA. The US EPA is what? The United States Protected Agency, right? But I don't think they're a protection agency, they're the polluters agency. That's what I think they are. They're the United States Polluter Protection Agency because they protect all the corporations on all the chemicals that they have in their products there. And and, and so, so uh, I have a book here that I've been reading, Poison Spring. And in Poison Spring, it states that the US EPA is the most corrupt agency in the United States. And the reason why, because the decisions that they make among all the other agencies is the most important decision that they make because it determines the health and welfare of the public here in the USA. And they haven't even banned Roundup, where the World Health Organization says it's a probable cause of cancer. And a lot of countries in Europe have banned Roundup. And uh, in uh, Argentina, they're going to ban Roundup. But where haven't they banned Roundup? Here in America, and, and what's going to happen? Here, spring is coming, right, guys? And everyone that has a lawn, so, well, what are they doing? They're, they're buying a spray. They're spraying Roundup on the grass. It sprays if they have kids. Kids are, are getting Roundup. If they walk on the grass, they walk on in their home. They have rugs. They'll have more Roundup in their home than they have out in the lawn. And that's going to affect their kids. It's going to affect their, their dogs. And, 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 and so, so money is the key for the US EPA, and that's why it's called the US Polluter Protected Agency, because they feel that money is the most important thing to protect the health and welfare of the people here in the United States. I'm, I'm gonna read a quote in this book, what, what it says about money. It states here, money, not human health and welfare. People are cheap these days. People are cheap these days, guys. The chemical industry can kill as many workers as they have at any one time. Yet there are still more workers waiting outside to take their place. Government looks the other way while the workers gasp for, gasp for breath. 
And, and this is what the US EPA has to do. They have to protect the health and welfare of the people. Now, today we had the Memorial Day parade, right? You see guys uh, buying, the, selling the uh, poppy seeds or, or, or giving them away. Now, I, I don't know if you ever know the history of the poppy seeds, but that's in Flanders Field. It's 100 years an anniversary. And in Flanders Field in World War I, what happened in World War I? The first chemical warfare, gas, guys. In World War I, they had gas, right? And, and then what happened in World War II? DDT, right? DDT, and they did ban DDT, our government, right? But they didn't ban all the other chemicals that made up DDT, and all those chemicals are still here. Now, uh, what happened in Vietnam War? Agent Orange, right? And, and the government wouldn't say that it was bad for our soldiers, it was bad for the Vietnamese, and now in 2015, what do we have now? Roundup, and our government is still not saying that it's bad for the people. So we have a chemical warfare that our government is allowed through all these years. So that's why I'm here to join the March Against Mon Monsanto, because uh, uh, our, our agency has to protect the health and welfare of the people, but we have to do it at the front end. It's too late when we get it at the back end, guys. So let's keep, and we have to educate. We have to keep and demonstrate and educate the public that that we need to protect the health and welfare of the people. Thank you. Hello. So uh, next we have Nancy Perlman with Illinois Right to Know GMO. Hi everybody. Hey, thanks for coming out here today. Really appreciate it. You guys are a voice for change. Each and every one of you is courageous by being here and standing up for what you believe in. I am a mom and I'm a health coach and I'm here today because I am so concerned about what's happening to our food because of GMOs and Roundup. I want to share for a moment my family story. My husband and my son both have celiac disease and I have gluten sensitivity and my husband was so sick he could have died um, he didn't know he had celiac disease and none of us can eat gluten or we get very sick and we also feel sick when we eat GMOs so we do everything that we can to avoid eating GMOs the gluten containing grains and I don't know how many of you know this like wheat and barley are being sprayed with Monsanto Roundup that contains the active ingredient glyphosate. So for those of you that eat wheat, barley need to know that. And they do this for sheer convenience of drying the grains faster so they can harvest them faster. And then the glyphosate gets into the grains that people eat. Doctors and scientists are now looking at the possibility of the glyphosate contributing to people getting celiac disease gluten sensitivity, and many, many autoimmune diseases that are so on the rise and making people sick. The World Health Organization recently declared glyphosate a probable human carcinogen, and research studies on rats have shown tumors, diseases, and infertility by the third generation in this. Is this, I ask you, what we want for our kids and future generations? No! no. I am so concerned that our kids are getting sicker younger, that they're not expected to live as long as we do. That's telling us there's something happening that we need to be paying attention to. It's a loud wake-up call to all of us to create change in our food system. Monsanto's GMOs and Roundup are contributing to that happening. And I know that makes most of us angry, but we need to take that energy and thoughts of anger and put that aside and put our energy and thoughts into being voices for positive change about our food system. Jeffrey Smith from the Institute for Responsible Technology, he's one of the, he's the biggest experts on GMOs in the world. And he warns about the dangers of GMOs. He says we have a tipping point and we're getting very close to that, a tipping point where consumers will reject buying GMOs in the grocery stores. If 15 to 20% of people only buy organic or non-GMO products in grocery stores, 
corporations are all about profits. If they see their sales drop while organic sales continue to skyrocket, they'll see their GMOs are a marketing liability for them. So, how can you be an advocate for change? Help create this tipping point of consumer rejection. Talk to your friends and family members about the research that shows how GMOs are being linked to skyrocketing disease rates, especially gut-related issues and conditions. Volunteer with Illinois Right to Know GMO! <laughs> so we can get GMOs labeled in Illinois. Host movie screenings and GMO awareness events in your local communities. I've done it. I started. It's easy to do. And people need to learn about it. You know, at your local library or community center. Help get GMOs labeled in Illinois because do we have a right to know what we're feeding ourselves and our families? Yes! The truth is we've been lied to for over 20 years that GMOs even existed. No one told us. It was kept secret from Americans. There are 64 countries around the world that have GMOs labeled now. Now is the time for our country to have GMOs labeled. There are countries around the world, even communities in America that have already banned GMOs. So I say this to you. I see Illinois having GMO labeling, do you? I see a world that has an abundance of organic and healthy food for everyone. Do you? Yeah. And finally, I see a world where there are no GMOs anymore. Do you? Yeah. This is possible. Together, we can create change. Now let's get busy. We've got work to do. Thank you. You know, I, I just like to make a comment on GMO. They said that the reason why they need the crops for GMO is to feed the world uh, population that is growing. Uh, and then that's why they need GMO. But you know, uh, all the crops that they raise from GMO, where does that go to, guys? It goes to a small percentage for uh, human consumption. Uh, all the other GMO crops that they grow from GMO doesn't go for human consumption. So that reason what they're saying is for, for uh, uh, growing food for all the population, it grows for uh, uh, other things than eating. It, maybe uh, energy, you know, they, they want gas, they, they, they do for uh, livestock feed, not for human uh, uh, consumption. So, so that a fallacy of uh, having GMO food to feed the, the world is not true, guys. That's, uh, I just like to make that a point. Hello. Um, next, we have Terry with Illinois Right to Know GMO. Um, everyone that's doing the kids' activity and it's going to do a skit or a show and tell, um, they're organizing, getting ready for that now. They're going to come on in one or two speakers from now. But everyone with their children, go on over there. And Nally, wave at everybody. She's waving at us back there by the table. So let's uh, get that organized, and uh, that's happening. Next is uh, Terry with Illinois Right to Know GMO. I'm so excited to be here. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I'm thrilled to be with so many like-minded souls. Mike, it's fabulous. I appreciate so much everything you've done. Yeah, Big round of applause for Mike. So, hello, welcome. I am speaking for Joan Levin, who is at another engagement out of town. Many of you probably know Joan. Um, I am extremely pleased on her behalf to deliver a speech that she wrote. It's entitled, Who is Really Anti-Science? Sometimes when folks are on the losing side of an issue, they try to discredit others and embroider their own case with myths to make themselves look good. For example, the biotech industry tried to gull us into thinking that GMOs are safe, even though it's clear there have been serious warning flags for the past few decades. And they tried to make us look heartless with entreaties that a hungry world could not be fed without genetic engineering. Even though it's clear that world hunger is a distribution problem, not a production problem. Yeah. Now, 
The rallying cry of Monsanto and its biotech allies is we are anti-science because we raise questions about genetically engineered foods and their safety and overwhelming environmental impacts. But who is really anti-science here? I submit we are not anti-science. The anti-science ones are the shills for an industry that held bent on selling its products come what may. Isn't this anti-science? Yeah. yeah. The companies hide behind a policy statement without adequate scientific evidence and use this unsupportable policy to flood the market with questionable products without the required scientific testing of each and every genetically engineered food. Isn't this anti-science? Yes. These companies hide behind intellectual property law to keep scientists from doing rigorous testing that could produce results contrary to their scientific, uh, their commercial interests. Isn't this anti-science? Yes. These companies intentionally mislead the public, trumpeting only the findings of the scientific organizations that support their views, while ignoring the ones that express doubts about their safety. Isn't this anti-science? Yes! These companies orchestrate smear campaigns against scientists who do produce experimental results showing the dangers of these products. I'd say this too was anti-science, right? Yeah, isn't this anti-science? Yes! So don't let anyone call you anti-science because you insist on scientific testing for each, every genetically engineered food on the market. And this means independent testing with the necessary safeguards to assure adequacy and impartiality. We are the ones who are for science. We are the ones who are for honest science. And Monsanto and its allies, they're the ones who are anti-science. Their day is almost over. So I tell you, step up, step up, step up, be counted, get involved, yes you too, thank you, because if you're not at the table, you're on the menu, thank you for your activism. Change, in hap change happens in society by doing what we're doing. But the rubber really meets the road in public policy. You've got to talk to your, your community organizers, your uh, elected officials, state reps, congressmen, senators. We need, we need to go there and talk to them, call them up, do that. Next we have Dr. Brennan. Um, I would like to just tell you a little bit of what I see and do in my office. I, um, I'm a doctor who specializes in natural medicine. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, I, I'm a doctor who... Okay, I'm Dr. Michelle Brannick and I specialize in primary care natural medicine. So what that means, I treat the cause of problems. And I just want to share with you, I'm going to give you a personal testimonial, but what I see in my office is enormous amount of digestive complaints. So I see men, women, and children with all kinds of digestive complaints like gas, bloating, heartburn, burping, abdomen pain, diarrhea, and constipation. And a lot of these problems are due to diet. So when I go through their history, I take an extensive history of their diet. And of course, people tell me things like, I've been eating the same for the past 20 years and my diet hasn't changed. But we all know the diet has changed. It's been genetic, genetically modified. And so what's happening is these foods are not reacting to our gut very well. So what happens is when we eat these genetically modified foods, they irritate the lining of our gut and cause irritation. And we want to get rid of this irritation so we have digestive complaints like loose stools or heartburn, burping, um, gas and bloating. So about five years ago, I personally had an experience with an unusual digestive complaint of my own. And I had a really bad bloating. And I was thinking, oh my god, am I pregnant? But I was not. And I was so concerned that I even went and got a liver test and a, an ultrasound on my liver, and that was negative. So I said, well, it must be something in my diet. And again, this is like five, six years ago. And when I took out all the um, genetically modified grains, basically I eliminated grains from my diet, the bloating went away. 
And once I added grains back in, the bloating came back. So then I went organic, and of course, I was fine after that. So our foods are really causing a lot of health problems, and like Nancy, I'm very concerned about our health and our children's health and what's going on with our food. So I'd like to talk a little bit about glyphosates, what they're doing to our gut. What they do is they disrupt the friendly bacteria, they decrease the friendly bacteria and promote the bad bacteria in our gut. And when, the bad, when there's high amounts of bad bacteria in the gut, it prevents the gut from manufacturing amino acids. And amino acids are really important for all kinds of things in our body, like they build our immune system, they're part of our respiratory system, our digestive system, our skin, our hair, our nails. So amino acids are really important. They're the building blocks to everything in our body. So amino acids like tryptophan, tyrosine, serotonin, cysteine are all very, very important in brain function. Without these amino acids, we experience mental disturbances like overstimulation, inability to focus, lack of appetite suppression, and violent behaviors, depression, anxiety, and much, much more. In addition to the amino acid defu dis, um, dis, uh, deficiencies, further results in additional nutritional deficiencies, and it prevents the liver from detoxification. Glyphosates also deplete micronutrients such as calcium, magnesium, zinc, iron, and sulfur, all important in heart, muscle, immune, liver, and liver function. It also impairs sugar utilization, which is evident by the large amount of diabetes that's actually epidemic in our country today. So it is in my opinion that GMO foods, along with the associated chemicals, really set us up for poor health, poor quality of life, probably shortened lifespan. GMOs, glycophosphates, destroy the land, people, health. The objective of companies like Monsanto is not quality of food, but about greed, control, and monopoly. It's not to protect life and environment, but to protect their money. Thank you. Hi. Next, we have Cindy. Cindy's with the March Against Monsanto, and she's with Anonymous. Thank you everybody so much for coming out. We have a really good turnout today. I'm so excited to see all of you. Um, I am gonna back up what that doctor just said because I know from personal experience that everything that she just said is true and I don't need anyone to approve it or put a stamp on it and tell me that it's true because I lived through it with my little girl. She was the one with the bullhorn yelling at the GMO people if any of you guys saw her. <laughs> She, on her sign, she wanted to draw a picture of herself in the hospital hooked up to all of those IVs and pick lines and the oxygen. For the last three years, in about two weeks, it'll be three years that she has been completely healthy. And it's because I cut all of that garbage out of her diet. It was killing her. I almost lost her. I spent seven days in the PICU, no sleep, I was losing her. She pulled through and I decided that we really needed to make some life changes. And she has been perfectly healthy since. Monsanto is the largest multinational GMO bioengineering company. And it's just nobody that creates pesticides and manufactures all of this stuff should have anything to do with our food. That right there is a red flag. So I don't know how anyone could think that any of that is okay. Poison, food, they don't go together. It's common sense, it's not science. I just hope that being here and seeing my healthy, beautiful little girl here Maybe, you know, one of us could make a difference in someone's life that maybe is going through something with their child, you know, what the way I was going through with her. And I was fortunate enough to stumble upon this information, and I ran with it. So I just hope that 
anybody, if you know anybody that's going through this, please let them know this is not like some hippie mumbo jumbo. It's true. It is bad for you. It will cause digestive issues, skin problems. I can't even go into all the stuff that was wrong with her. She was on antibiotics at least two or three times a month. It was just horrific. She has not taken medicine in three years. She is fine. But please just spread the word. I am here today to let you guys know about my personal experience because I do take this Monsanto thing personally because it affected my family. And I almost lost a family member because of it. And I don't care who thinks I'm crazy. You know what? I'm still going to keep talking. And I'm going to keep spreading my truth and hopefully make a difference in another mother's life or another child's life. Because these kids are the ones that are going to have to deal with it later on and their children. Okay? So we need to keep them healthy and keep their minds right and teach them the truth so they can keep it going. She and I are marching here today. I'm marching for her. I'm marching for every single child here, all of the children across the world, anybody that has been affected by this horrific company that has no business even existing. And that's why we're here. And I hope that's why you guys are here too. From Chicago Anonymous, Monsanto, you should have expected us. Monsanto doesn't give us good food, but we're against Monsanto, so we give good food off, and we don't like letting other children get sick. So that's why we were against Monsanto. Thank you again, guys, for coming out. It's a natural food store. They, uh, they're actually worker-owned and member-owned. It's not like one of these big corporate stores. Um, they're very much in the community. We have Rachel Azarello here. She was here. There she is. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Dill Pickle is, we're waiting on the speaker to come. Um, he's, he's waiting on somebody. But we have a Dill Pickle person here. We're waiting on the other. All right. Rachel Lazzarello uh, is going to talk to us about community gardens. Hello, everybody. Um, yes, of course. Uh, Mike asked me to speak today as a representative of community gardening in Chicago. I've been involved in community gardening in Chicago for 13 years now. Um, I, I think it's kind of interesting to get up here and talk to everybody about all the issues related to Monsanto and to GMOs because there's the phrase preaching to the choir, but it's good to hear it again and re resolve ourselves as to why we're against it. So um, I'm just going to mention a few things. One of the reasons I garden is about food security. So I'd like to talk about that for a second. A lot of people are dependent on food that comes from the grocery store and a lot of people don't have the energy and resources to spend like some of us do here today to really research and understand all the issues involved in just going to the grocery store. Um, one of my favorite authors, Michael Pollan, perhaps some of you have read his books, uh, he has said that eat food, not a lot, and mostly plants, because we don't really know what's happening with our food, and that's why it's really important to garden if we can, because then we know where the food is coming from. Another issue related to food security is we probably all here buy organic when we can, and we know that organic is not cheap, right? It's usually way more expensive than conventional, conventionally grown produce. Um, so if we start gardening and we have gardens, then we, our neighbors see it and then we can talk to them about these kinds of topics. Um, 
you go to the grocery store and you have to buy these pears and the pears are $1.99 a pound, but you can have a pear tree and have pears for 20 years plus, or your tomatoes, and we can save these heirloom varieties that are quickly disappearing because we are a monocrop culture. And that's a whole other story as to why we're sick, because then we need Monsanto's pesticides to kill off the bugs and we're creating super bugs in this monoculture agricultural landscape. Um, so also it's very interesting in a history probably some of you know about the victory gardens that existed during World War I and World War II when our government was actually encouraging us to become self-dependent on growing our own food to support the war effort. So I think that is something we should keep in mind and, and take to heart and become dependent on growing our own food. And of course, when we can't do that, if it's not possible, if we just don't have a green thumb, I've been gardening for 13 years and you think I would, but I just kind of put it in the ground and hope it goes. Um, we, we try to buy from the farmer's market, right? And buy as local as we can and support our local farmers so we know where our stuff comes from. Um, we're all really against Monsanto. We hate them for various reasons. Um, anybody that wants to hide behind the FDA and not allow us to label our food when clearly there is a consumer majority that wants their food labeled. And in European countries, many European countries label their food if they haven't banned GMOs altogether. It's just enough reason to be suspicious and be like, I don't think so, Monsanto. Um, and I'd like to take a moment to also remember one of the other victims of Monsanto, and that's all the farmers in India who have committed suicide because they could know if they had a bad crop year, they still owed Monsanto all that money. And they're, and they're peasants, really. They're, they're not making a lot of money. And so if they have a bad crop, they can't afford the chemicals to spray on their crops, much less the seeds to buy every year because Monsanto, of course, doesn't allow them to keep the seeds in our, and are also developing seeds that cannot reproduce. Um, and that is an ongoing problem still. So um, I hope if you can't garden that you will consider container gardening. If you want any resources in regards to how you can do that in Chicago, let me know. Uh, neighbor space is a good resource, as is Open Lands. They're both doing fantastic work in Chicago. Have a great day. Thank you, Rachel. Next we have Tom Broderick from the, Democrat, the Chicago Democratic Socialists of America. He's going to talk to us about free trade or fair trade more appropriately and the TPP and fast track and all that nasty stuff. They're trying to preempt our, our mandatory labeling laws with, uh, you know, not only federal legislation, but they're trying to do it internationally as well. Thank you. Um, the worst, uh, the bad news I'm going to give you first is that uh, the Senate last night, sorry, let, the bad news is that last night the U.S. Senate uh, passed uh, Fast Track Trade Promotion Authority. If you didn't know it, it, it happened uh, close to midnight. Um, well, actually, got about 10 p.m. But in any case, it's now going to the House, and it's in the House where we have a better chance of stopping it. We knew that early on, um, and what TP, what 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 Fast Track does is the House will have to cede its authority over trade, international trade, something that they would have to do. They would have to vote to cut their own responsibility. That means they can cut and run. They don't have to take responsibility for something like what happened with NAFTA, where uh, thousands of American jobs went overseas, thousands of Mexican farmers lost their homes uh, because of the, the, the system of uh, ajito farming, where, where it's communal. Um, and the, the same things will happen if Fast Track passes, only it'll be on an inter a much larger scale. It's called the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which is the Pacific Rim. It's about 40% of the world's economy. Um, and then there, following that will be TTIP, which is the uh, Transatlantic Trade um, something partnership, or TAFTA, the Transatlantic Fair Trade Agreement, like NAFTA. 
In the House in Illinois, there is one Democrat, his name is Mike Quigley. He's the fifth district representative. He is very pro fast track. He says that he is afraid that China will surpass us as a world power. That's going to happen or not. It has nothing to do with fast track. So on Thursday, um, there's going to be a demo at Mike Quigley's office at uh, 3742 West Irving Park Road at 2 p.m. Uh, we want to push Mike, even though his vote is likely going to be against us, he is the only Democrat in Illinois who will probably vote for Fast Track, and we want to stop that. So if, if, you're, if you're able to come, uh, it'll be 2 p.m. at uh, 3742 West Irving Park Road, uh, 5th Congressional District. Hopefully all of you know how to get in touch with your state rep, I mean your Illinois, your federal rep, whether from Illinois or, or, or from an, uh, one of the neighboring states, Indiana, Wisconsin. You need to get a hold of your congressional representative and urge them to vote against uh, Fast Track or Trade Promotion Authority, which is what it's uh, known as professionally. Uh, in Illinois, Durbin voted for Fast Track, I mean sorry, voted against Fast Track. Kirk voted for Fast Track, you know, Republican, Democrat. Yeah, Boo is right, you know, he's a jerk. Um, but it's, if, it's too late now, but it's, it's not too late to stop the representatives. So whomever your representative is, get on the phone and call them. Uh, the, the, the House is going to be in recess because of the Memorial Day holiday, but there's no reason you can't call and leave a message. The more that, he, the more that these folks hear from you, the better. We think we've changed um, two votes. Um, Bill Foster, we believe, is going to vote against it. Uh, there's been a lot of work from Occupy uh, in, in the western suburbs. I see Occupy Naperville here, and they've, they've been helpful on, on moving Foster. Um, and the other one is Tammy Duckworth, who uh, says she wants to run for Senate. Um, it looks like she's leaning in this direction. So again, we're only stuck with Quigley and we want to stick it to Quigley. We want to change his vote. If he won't change his vote, you know he's going to come up for re-election again. Um, it's every two years, uh, and this will be a vote that we might be able to hang around his neck, and um, I, he should hear from you. So thank you very much. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm hearing three o'clock. I was told two. I was told 2 o'clock. Okay, so, okay, great. All right, thanks. We think 2. I, th I think it's 2 o'clock, but you know what? All over the uh, March Against Monsanto um, invite page on Facebook, I'm going to be blasting at with information about Quigley's office, the, the Thursday, the 28th. I'm pretty sure it's 2. It might be 3, but I'm pretty sure it's 2. Okay, um, so maybe it got changed. But I'm also doing one at noontime having to do with the Dark Act at uh, Jan Schakowsky's office at noon the same day, and then we'll go over and support the other one. So, all right, next up is Veterans for Peace, Steve Nelson. Thank you. Juan's pretty face, great smile, and sparkling personality lit up a room. Her intelligence and quick wit puts everyone at ease because of her abilities and natural beauty. It's easy to forget she is disabled. Tron T. Juan was born in 1986 with one hand and no legs. Like three million other Vietnamese people, she is a victim of dioxin poisoning from Agent Orange. Her birth defects were a direct result of her parents' exposure to this terrible poison. American scientists in Monsanto and Dow Chemical knew about the extreme dangers of dioxin while the United States was dumping 20 million gallons of Agent Orange on South Vietnam from 1961 to 1971. 20 million gallons. 
They kept silent about these dangers. Because of the millions of dollars that they earned, as they sat in their mansions counting their money, I wonder if they thought about people like my friend, Tron T. Juan. Dioxin changes the chromosomes passed from each generation to the next. So far, three generations of Vietnamese people, American veterans of the war, including my cousin Oliver and my brother-in-law Bill, and descendants of Vietnam vets, have suffered from mental illnesses, diseases of all organs, from the skin to the brain to the heart, cancer, miscarriages, stillbirth, deaths. The sad list goes on and on. I was honored to accompany Juan and the other Vietnamese Agent Orange victims in Chicago recently when they were here on tours of the U.S. to raise awareness of what we created in their beautiful land. They wanted Americans to see what happened to them and to tell us that the U.S. Supreme Court decided that the Vietnamese victims of Agent Orange had no legal right to sue the companies like Monsanto that manufactured these poisons. About the only help Vietnamese have received from the U.S. is Vietnam veterans who have gone back to Vietnam to help those people, to build and staff health clinics and help in many other ways. I am so proud of what they have done. As a veteran myself of the American War in Vietnam, I drove them to speaking engagements in Chicago and talked about the effects of Monsanto's Agent Orange on American vets. Some American Vets started receiving some compensation, but not nearly enough. In Chicago, Veterans for Peace, my friends right here, and Vietnam Veterans Against the War helped, helped to organize uh, these tours of Vietnamese people. So far, the children and grandchildren of American veterans who have been affected by Agent Orange have received absolutely zero compensation, nothing. It's time for Monsanto, Dow Chemical, and the other chemical companies to admit their lies and to help those people in Vietnam, the United States, Australia, Korea, and the Philippines who have suffered and died and continue to suffer and die while the hyper-capitalists in these corporations made millions. To those people I say, shame on you. 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 Thank you very much. We have the Dill Pickle Co. up in the house. This is Allie Young. And she's going to talk to us about co-ops and, and good food. Co-ops are good and food is good. Um, I'm here from the Dill Pickle Food Co-op. We are a community-owned grocery store in Logan Square. Uh, with a focus on local sourcing, on organic sourcing. Um, and we're here to march today to, uh, to spread the message that I think is, is at the heart of this struggle, and that's ownership. Uh, who, owns, who owns the land? Uh, who owns the seeds? Who, who are the middlemen in all the transactions? Uh, and with a community-owned grocery store, the profits go back into the community that it serves. Um, and we are really excited to be here marching today um, with you all. Thanks for having us. The Dill Pickle Co-op, it's on Fullerton. Go there, become members. I did. Next, we have Zen Honeycut. 
all the way from California. She's the director of Moms Across America. You know those marches on the 4th of July? This is the one who started it. Zen Honeycutt. Thank you so much. This is awesome to be in Chicago. I don't know you, but I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. So, yeah, awesome. My mother told me that when you don't like what somebody's doing, you go to them directly, right? Plus, I don't like it that Monsanto's commercial showed up in my living room. So I went into their living room, I went into their shareholder meetings, and spoke in front of 800 to 1,000 people. I have to say it was fun. I brought the message of the moms, though, and I said, Monsanto, Monsanto makes us sick right? Their products are making our children sick. And I met the CEO of Monsanto and I said to him, you know, Mr. Grant, it takes a big man to make a big and powerful company, but it takes an even bigger man to acknowledge when something's not working and to go into a new direction. And he said, and oh, and I said, and so I look forward to the day when Monsanto goes in the direction which does not harm our children. And he said, well, we have all kinds of science and we, we're going in new directions all the time. And I said, we have science that your products harm our children. And just consider if you're wrong, the, reperdu the repercussions to your company are enormous and the repercussions to the world are huge. And he said, well, if you're wrong, you're scaring an awful lot of people. And I said, if I were wrong, and I'm not, then all the, the reper only repercussion to the people is that they're eating organic. And there is nothing wrong with organic food. It is perfect the way it is. I also said to the shareholders, I looked right at them and I said, regarding your safety studies, right? We have found glyphosate in our water, in our children's urine, in our breast milk. And we have found that that glyphosate stays viable in salty, dark water for 315 days. We have found that the level of, um, that shrimp has been, they die after 5.2 parts per million after only four days. That's their safety study that I got from the Freedom of Information Act from the EPA, right? What's in our sugar is 25 parts per million. That's one of the most common ingredients in our food. So we have to ask the question, what is in our womb? Dark, salty water. What's the size of a six-week-old shrimp? I mean, fetus. What's the size of a six-week-old fetus? It's the size of a shrimp, right? We must be, re they must be responsible for the contamination of our mothers and our children and the pollution of our planet. What is our infertility and sterility rate right now and, and miscarriage rate in America? It's 30%. It directly correlates with the pig study of 3,000 pigs that were fed glyphosate grain feed and it went from 3% up to 33%. That's a 30% increase. Direct correlation. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that you want to avoid glyphosate when you're pregnant, do you? And has the EPA told pregnant mothers to avoid glyphosate? Have they done anything about it? No. Not at all. You know what all these, these um, chemical companies say? I went and I spoke at Monsanto in St. Louis. I spoke at Syngenta in Switzerland and with DuPont in Delaware and Dow in Michigan. They all said that the EPA says this is safe. They all passed the buck, right? So this is what they're doing. They're passing the buck. This is not the America that we stand for, where the, the chemical companies both make the, the, the poisons that they spray in the food and then they make the pharmaceuticals to make us feel better. This is not the America that our founding fathers stood for. So I'm going to give you just one sentence from the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life liberty and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Do they have our consent? Yeah. 
the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as they, as them shall, as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. It goes on to say that it is their right, their duty, to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. The Founding Fathers had it right in so many ways. How I, however, I declare now is the time for the voice of the mother and the women to be added to how we govern. It is time, yes moms, it's time for us to be acknowledged for what we contribute to society. Do you know that the Native American Tribal Council to this day is elected by the mothers of the tribe? And they continue to hold the power to remove a leader based on lack of performance. If they don't protect them, they're gone. Now why is this? This is because the community trusts that a mother's commitment is in alignment with their best interest, universally, around the world, right? So we mothers say that our government shall only take actions which protect the health, well-being, and environment of the children of current and future generations. Otherwise, we're not protecting our future, right? So how do we make this a reality? Number one, many of you may not like this. The only way to make the laws change is to get involved in politics. That means some of you that are the most mad about this need to run for office. I'm telling you, that's the way it's gonna go. We need to face it that our government is the way it is because we let it get this way. And it's time to remove the leaders who do not protect us and not vote in leaders who won't, period. We need, this is caucus year. This is the year we need to be decisive and not listen to anyone who says that certain leaders cannot be elected because of the party they're in. We need to rally and now is the time and actually tell our friends and family, you need to vote for this person because, right? We need to be vocal about it. So um, we need to, you know, listen to the mothers. You are what you eat, right? It's better to be safe than sorry. And to tell the government, stop it, stop it now because we said so, right? So, and instead of appealing to the people in power, we become the people in power. And we, we become the people in power. And we don't have to wait for our leaders to protect us who are elected. We don't have to wait for a year or so for now. We exercise our power now. And how we do that is number two, be the power now. Think about it. We buy the food and the products. We have the power. Many of us just don't realize the extent of our power or we waste it by being lazy and buying junk food and junk food products, right? So the chemical companies only have their power because we give it to them. We give them that money. So when we stop buying those toxic products, they will have to stop selling them. It should be our number one job to get everyone we know to stop buying toxic products. That means no more Jolly Ranchers in our classrooms, right? All those kinds of things. We speak up and we say something about that. Okay, so today I'm gonna to make five international calls to action. Of course, locally, we're gonna get, Illinois is gonna get labeling, right? That's just the way it's gonna go. That's the way, I can't wait, I'm so excited. Number one, internationally, create a chemical-free community. On Monday, I ask you to call your city council, your school board, or your homeowners association, just pick one, and find out when the next board meeting is. You can be a speaker, It'll, you, you get three minutes, they have to give you that time. Get your community to discontinue the use of Roundup. Why do I say discontinue and not ban? Because many states have laws against banning. Monsanto was sneaky and they made laws already. You can't ban certain products in your neighborhood. So we don't need them to ban, we just need them to discontinue the use, right? And use organic alternatives instead, or pull the weeds, get your Boy Scouts together, or in 2016, there'll be steam weeder machines that will be available in America, and you can find that information on our website, I promise, I'll put it up tomorrow. But um, they're a company from Australia and they're really great. So you can also create this chemical-free community by going to chem 
freecom.com. It's a new website. It's going to be like Yelp for chemical-free businesses. So you can get your school or your dog like grooming place or your nail polish or a hair polish. That all these com 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 companies can go chemical-free, and we can create a safe community for our, our children and our families. Number two, reboot the EPA. I'll be honest, I don't know how this is gonna happen, but if the Poison Spring guy, Evangelos Valiento, says we gotta get new leadership in the EPA, EPA. Next Wednesday, May 27th, it happens to be Rachel Carson's birthday. If you haven't read Silent Spring, you need to read that. It was also the one year anniversary from when we moms went to the EPA and told them that we found glyphosate in our breast milk. And what have they done about it? Nothing right? A whole year. They haven't even submitted a letter to pregnant mothers saying that it should be avoided. So we need to barrage that. We need to shut them down with phone calls, okay? We need to tell them that the director, Neil Anderson and Gina McCarthy, need to be fired and we need new, um, new leadership such as Jay Feldman from the Beyond Pesticides. I'm just nominating him. You can nominate somebody else if you want, but he's awesome. Okay, so we need to everybody call. Okay, can you get your phones out and just put this number in as a contact? Everybody should have the EPA in your phone to dial whenever the hell you feel like it, okay? The number is 703, okay, 703-308-8187. 703-308-8187. That is Neil Anderson. He's the director of the Pesticide Review Board. You know they're probably going to renew the license for glyphosate by July for another 15 years. We've got to be prepared to do something about it. And tell everybody, like that whole bus. Okay, number three, expose the truth. Get yourself tested for glyphosate. Go to momsacrossamerica.com under action. Feed the World is doing this whole program. It's great. They're going to donate back $5 to us, so we appreciate that. And test your urine, the water from your home, your school, or your capital. We need like 2,000 samples tested for a real scientific study that the EPA cannot ignore. Okay, it costs about 110 bucks. It's totally worth it to find out what kind of glyphosate is in your water or your urine. And if you find it in, a in your water, you can do reverse osmosis to get it out, okay? Just put minerals back in. Um, number four, empower your, to your town. Join in a 4th of July parade. You go to our website, click on events, cause and create a parade, and you can reach tens of thousands in your town locally and millions nationally in a single day. We need numbers, don't we guys? Yeah. And it's really easy to be in a parade, honestly, and you get cheered. It's really fun. When do you ever get cheered for talking about GMOs, okay? So it's really easy, and this year's banner says March for an Organic America, OCA. We're in partnership, so March for an Organic America, it says GMO-free food and pesticide-free schools. It's time to march for the solution too, isn't it? Awesome. And number five, last one, we're gonna create the world we want, okay? We need to envision that. October 16th is World Food Day, and Rodale Institute, amazing organization, asked us to join in with them in a walk for an organic planet. And we're gonna be walking just in our local areas to our local district and representatives and giving them a document that the Rodale Institute created which basically shows that organic is the way of the future. It is the thing that we need to survive, right? So it's this great document. We're gonna give it to them. We're thinking Friday after school with the kids. You walk about a mile to your representative and gather in your towns and walk for an organic planet. And then another idea we had was why not the next day since the um, you're all gathered and you're doing a, a local action, have October 17th be Dance for an Organic Planet and have a, like a hoedown at a local organic farm and invite all the climate change people and the fracking people and the GMO people and the vaccine people and everybody, right? Everybody get together because this is all about the chemical companies controlling our future all of it. It's all the chemical companies. So we need to get together as a, as a huge group. And um, somebody said that if there's a revolution and there isn't dancing, I'm not coming. So why not bring some dance and bring some drum circle, you know, drum circles and some guitars and things like that and get together. You could make it a local fundraiser if you want to and have some fun on October 17th. So put that on your calendar and gather for health and justice around the world. So has everybody just heard one action that you can take on? Raise your hand. Yeah.
Awesome. Thank you so much. And after this, I'm going to ask you to turn to the person next to you and tell them which action you're taking on and by when. Because if we don't have an accountability, like the 4th of July parades, you know, if there's a date by when, it doesn't happen. Right? So because we will not stop, we will not give up, the love for our families will never end. These are our bodies, our children, and our planet, our country. This is our future. Thank you so much for your attention and your partnership. Zen Honeycutt for Moms Across America. All right, we have one last act. About 30 or 40 of them all at the same time. We're not chanting now, thank you. <laughs> the dark act. Um, this banner right here, making us sick. Monsanto makes us sick. Monsanto's Roundup glycolate is making us sick. And the World Health Organization just said so recently. Probable cause of cancer. Those over there can't get around that. As much as they are in denial. Look up GMO myths. Or Stephen Drucker. Author Gene's Twisted Truth. Order that in your local libraries. That'll really help out the book, produce more books. The booksellers, the book publishers will order more, especially if the libraries are ordering them. Um, so the Dark Act. Next week, we already heard about the TPP rally at Quigley's office. Um, We'll be um, posting a lot of that on the Facebook pages um, over the course of the next few days. Um, so we're going to go to Jan Schakowsky's house a little earlier in the day at noon. And we're going to do a polite reminder rally. Jan's with us on some of the issues. And she's not so solid on some of the other issues. So we want a reminder that people want mandatory labeling of GMOs at the state level. We actually want it at the federal level. but states lead when it comes to this kind of legislation. 20 plus years, the feds have done nothing. We need to force them, the feds, to do a mandatory labeling law instead of this weak, weak, manda uh, weak uh, voluntary law. Mike Pompeo out of Kansas introduced this bill. It's a, a, we call it the Dark Act, denying the Americans the right to no act. So we need to remind Jan Schakowsky politely. She's our French. She's the one who first got labels, in fact, food ingredients labeled on all our, you know, mandatory uh, ingredients on our labels in the first place, on our food packaging. It was her. And she does a lot of credit for that. But, you know, politicians need a good nudge in the side. Sometimes they need a push. That's what we're gonna do. So I'll be, put, I'll be putting out a lot of information about that as well as the other rally. And then there's also one in Rockford the day before. If you don't know anybody in Rockford, we're gonna go to, uh, to one of the congressmen in Rockford as well. So anyways, our next act, Reverend Billy and the Stop Shopping Choir.
here today. Oh, we're so glad to be here from New York City where they're having this same rally right now in Union Square Park, praise be. We were there last year, amen. We feel the strength. We feel the joy. We feel the evolutionary cleverness, amen, praise be. Whoa. Of all the animals, all the life, all the bacteria, all the plants, all the honeybees. Coming back from 1,500 flowers laden with pollen that has neonicotinoids in it. And then having trouble finding the hive. Because neonicotinoids are neuropathic. That's the devil. Amen. Oh. Let's sing a song for you now. One, two, sing a song for you. One. Two, I got a pocket for tea, my honey bee and me. Where's my home I've gone? Where's my sweet, sweet tree? A thousand flowers touching me. They know I know the queen. They touched all the